All right, so I had a buddy write to me. He said he's suspended for two weeks. I'm not sure what that means, but I hope everything's going good. Uh, the person asked me to solve linear systems with my cast. I just want to make this clear to you that you can solve any system using the same method. So, and you would use the same tactic. So if you were trying to, to find out the intersection of a parabola against a, a linear function, etc., you just use the same math. So I'm going to show this to you two ways. First, I'm going to just show you some extra functionality of this calculator. I'm going to teach you how to save functions by name. And then I'm going to show you how to use the solve function. And then lastly, I'm going to let, show you how to use the functions of your graph, your graphing functional cast. This is actually really good stuff, and you should be great at this. So let's get started. So we're supposed to solve the linear system. Solve 5x plus 11 is equal to 7x minus 9. So let's start off by going to our calculator. And I always do this. I, I'm, I intentionally put this on this screen. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my 5x plus 11. 5x plus 11. 11. And the reason I'm doing this right now is to show you how to save a function. And this is if you're going to use the function over and over, but I'm just going to let you see it this way. So I'm going to just, let me go back over to it. I typed in 5x plus 11, then I went to control store. And then it gives you that little line there, doesn't it? You're just going to type in f, it's important, of x. Okay? And then hit enter. It's pretty anticlimactic because it says done. I wish it was more impressive than that, sorry. The other function was 7x minus 9, wasn't it? So 7x minus 9. Whoops, somebody already picked that up. 7x. Why am I get, I do that all the time? 7x minus 9, yeah? So then what we're going to do here again is control store. If you're saying, Charlie, I wouldn't have even used this in this case. I agree. I'm just trying to teach you some extra functionality because there is a time where you're really going to want to know to do this. It says done. So now this is what we have. We're going to use the solve function now, S-O-L-V. I just want you to take a quick look. When I type in S-O-L-V, before I put in the E, everything was in italics. As soon as I put in the E, it went to standard print. And what that tells us is that your calculator recognizes that you're asking it to perform a very specific function. F of X you can see that this f of x, the f of, is in bold. That means that your calculator recognizes that you've saved this function. It's this one up here. And that it's saying, I realize that when you said this, now you mean this. I'm going to set that equal to, so here's your equal sign over here, is equal to g of x. And the same bold print came up, didn't it? And then this is really important. This is a, just, I'm going to use this comma down here at the bottom. It tells us in tells you in terms of what, and we want this thing in terms of x. Okay, close parentheses. So solve f of x. So solve 5x plus 11 is equal to g of x 7x minus 9. So yeah, and hit enter, and it God, it is kind of anticlimactic because it just says x is 10. But that's what we wanted to know, isn't it? Okay, so there's our answer. X is equal to 10. The other way that your professor could ask you for this is that he or she could say, prove this graphically. In that case, what I would do is, seeing as we've already saved these functions, I would go to graphs, right? I'm going to menu, menu. I'm going to put in graphs. I'm going to go to graphs, right? I'm going to put in graphs. Check this out. F, wow, come on. F, and you see it's there again, don't you? F of X, right? There's that function that we are looking at, right? Now this sucks a little bit because now I'm seeing why I might not want to do it this way. X equals 10, because look at this. X equals 10 is going to be this value over here, right? So let's take a look at this really quickly. Let's also graph this. Just go to here on your calculator. Just that's a, Actually, if you hit tab on your calculator, it will take you there. So if you were to hit this tab button, it would take you there. And then I'm going to put in here g of x. So g of x, g of x. Maybe you can see what the problem is going to be. They intersect. Now, I don't know if you'd be able to tell or not that they intersect between here and here. So let's go to, let's, you know what? That's why we're doing this. So let's go ahead and do this, right? Let's go to menu. Let's go to menu and hit zoom. Let's zoom out. Here, just hit Zoom out, zoom out again, zoom out again. Can you see where these two things, right? And this is five, so someplace greater than zero, 
more than five, right? So now I'm gonna go ahead and try to do this. So go back to menu and hit analyze graph and hit not inflection, but intersection, right? And lower bound, lower bound is some X value less, less, and this to be really safe, some X value less than what you think the intersection is. Well, the intersection is definitely not a negative number, so I'm gonna use this as my lower bound. Remember, lower bound is the X value. I know that this thing, look, there's the, see the intersection there? Isn't that brilliant? So I just move this across. See, it says upper bound here. So I move it across, and there's the intersection. If you want to hit enter, go ahead and hit enter, and it'll show it to you. But there's that same number, and we got the intersection at x is equal to 10. So I hope this is really helpful. Um, I hope that you're uh, studying and you're doing your best work. And I also hope that if you're not subscribed to me, that you'll consider it. And your comments are always welcome. All right? Thanks.